Atlanta, Georgia, home of Martin Luther King Jr. Home of artists like Ludacris, Migos, Gucci Mane. Home to tourist attractions such as World of Coca-Cola, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Georgia Aquarium, and colleges like Georgia Tech, Georgia State, Morehouse, Bell, and Kennesaw State. Home to teams of the Atlanta Braves, Atlanta Hawks, Atlanta Falcons. Population? Who knows? But people won't stop moving here. And because of that, we have some of the worst traffic in the world, probably. Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia. So, Van Travers, what exactly do mechanical engineers do? So, I thought about it, and I think I can pretty much sum up what mechanical engineers do into about four categories. So, the first category is mechanical engineers design and redesign systems. The second category is mechanical engineers can look at a system that already exists and see if there's a problem in it. And if there is, they can think of some type of mechanical solution to either make the system better or to solve the problem. The third category is mechanical engineers can look at something that may be broke and think of ways that they can implement different countermeasures so that in the future that same thing doesn't break again. And the fourth area of mechanical engineering is dealing with manufacturing systems, just making sure that you produce good quality product for a good price at a good speed. And that pretty much sums up what mechanical engineers do. Why did you choose to become a mechanical engineer? So to tell you the truth, originally I told my mom I wanted to be a carpenter. And then she looked me in the eye and said, cost of living is too high, pick something else. So some of my teachers recommended, since I was good at math and science, that I look at engineering. Since in order to do engineering, you have to you know, have strengths in math and science. So I was like, all right, I'll try engineering. But then I had to pick what type, because there are so many different types of engineering. I looked into electrical engineering. I was like, nah, I don't, I don't really want to get shot. I looked into nuclear engineering. I was like, nah, I don't really want to get blown up. Chemical engineering, you know, I saw that Batman movie, The Two-Face, where, you know, that side of his face was all messed up, so I don't want to do chemical engineering. But at the time, my brother-in-law was a mechanic, so I was like, you know what, it'd be cool if I could do engineering, but somehow tie being a mechanic into it because I really enjoyed watching my brother work, so that's what led me to mechanical engineering. Why did you choose Georgia Tech? But, uh, so when I was looking in the colleges, I knew that I wanted to stay in Georgia, I wanted to stay close to friends, I wanted to stay close to family. So what I did was I literally just went to Google and I put in top 10 engineering schools in the United States. And out of all of them, the only one that was in Georgia was Georgia Tech. So that's honestly how I came to Georgia Tech. But they also had a good reputation, so I did do my research and I looked into their different programs and then I decided, all right, Yellow Jacket's what I'm gonna be. How was the freshman year? So, freshman year of college was, was a little rough, you know. First time away from home, and then just classes were ridiculously difficult. I've never been in classes ever that hard before in my life. Um, I took mostly core classes, so calculus, general chemistry, things like that. And at the same time, I was trying to maintain a part-time job because, you know, mom was like, you're paying your own bills, cell phone bill, etc. So. I was working at school psychology part time, uh, taking classes, and lo and behold, I made it through my freshman year. How was the sophomore year? So, sophomore year was interesting, mainly just because I realized I needed to start thinking about my future, what I wanted to do after college. One important thing to note is that even though a lot of people say you need to keep up a good GPA and your grades need to be good in order to get a good job after college, you also have to have relevant job experience. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. So, I mentioned before that I started off part-time at School of Psychology. So, I was like, all right, the next job I get it needs to be something that's actually related to my field. So, luckily, I found a professor on campus who was willing to take me under his wing for a mechanical engineering research position. He was actually doing a project at the end. So I worked for him my sophomore year, and then towards the end of my sophomore year, I went to my very first career fair, which is where I got an internship with General Electric for the summer of 2014, working at their gas turbine plant in Greenville, South Carolina. 
How was your junior year? So, my junior year was all right. So, you know, I was, I was feeling good. I was coming back from my internship with General Electric. You know, I had my work experience as a research assistant with a professor on campus. So, my resume was coming together as far as mechanical engineering experience. Um, I had to take a break from thinking about work experience for a minute, though, because junior year is when I started getting into my, my major classes. The, heat transfer, the thermodynamics, the fluid mechanics, the form of the bodies. Anybody else who went through it say can probably give them chills and shivers right now, but I hit the wrong one. I had to boggle down, make sure that I passed all those, because you know, freshman and sophomore year was pretty easy to keep A's and B's, but junior year I was barely holding on to the C's, but um, things went well, you know, I went to office hours, talked to professors, got extra tutoring help, and persevered through, but then it was time for next year's career fair. So, I went to the career fair with my education and my job experience, and I was able to land another internship, so this time with Cody Palmolive. How was senior year? So, I mentioned earlier that the area of mechanical engineer that I'm most familiar with is the ones that deal with manufacturing. That's because during my internships at both General Electric and Cody Palmolive, I was in the manufacturing environment. So. At General Electric, I was at a manufacturing plant that made, excuse me, I was at a manufacturing plant that made gas turbines, and then at Coat Gate Palmolive, I was at a manufacturing plant that made soft soap and speed stick deodorant. So I was like, all right, all right. So I'm getting a better sense of what I want to do. Because even when you decide which type of mechanical engineering you want to be, or any other type of engineering for that matter, that's still broken into so many different positions you can do. I could have been a test engineer, I could have been a quality engineer, etc. So I was like, all right, I think based on my internships, I want to go into manufacturing. So I started gearing my attention towards that. So senior year, finished up my major classes. Um, the biggest hurdle senior year at Georgia Tech is passing senior design, which is pretty much when an external company will come in and say, hey, we want to use Georgia Tech students and ask them to solve an actual problem that we're having in our industry. So I did my senior design project, uh, passed all of my senior classes, and then went to my very last career fair at Georgia Tech, which is where I talked to a General Motors recruiter. So together with my math, science, heat transfer, thermodynamics knowledge, paired with my research assistant position and Colgate at Palmolive and General Electric, General Motors decided that they would hire me on for a full-time job as an engineer at their facility. And eventually I went on to my current position that I have at Honda, working as a mechanical engineer. And that is the story of how I became a mechanical engineer. And I messed up. <laughs> Wait, man. It can't really see you. Wait, where's the... Uh... Right here. Okay, okay. Kind of dark. 